July 17th, the Servant of God, Francis Garces and Companions. Martyrs, First Order. Contemporary with the 21 missions founded by Father Juniper Serra and his successors along the coast of the present state of California, there was another chain of Franciscan missions extending from northern Mexico into Arizona, which territory was then called Pimeria Alta. The latter had been founded and administered by Jesuit missionaries during the eight decades from 1687 to 1767, when they were banished. They were then placed in the care of the Spanish Franciscans of the Apostolic College of Queretaro, Mexico, who remained until their expulsion in 1827. During those 60 years, the Franciscans not only constructed entirely new churches in some of the missions, for instance, San Xavier del Bac near Tucson, but they also founded several new ones, for instance, the two young, the two among the Yuma Indians in the southeastern corner of California. The first Franciscan missionary at San Xavier del Bac, the northernmost mission of the Pimeria Alta chain, was Father Francis Garces, a most enterprising frontier missionary who was consumed by an unbounded zeal for souls and cheerfully bore the greatest hardships. He lived on the same food as the Indians and learned to speak the Indian language perfectly. When he came to San Xavier in 1768, he was 30 years old. And during the next 10 years, with this mission as his headquarters, he made six expeditions far into the north, going as far as San Gabriel in California, in the Moki Indians near the Grand Canyon. He took along no other baggage than his breviary, an extra tunic, and a picture of Our Lady on the rear side of which was another of a condemned soul. The latter he used to instruct the Indians he encountered on the way. He traversed more than 5,000 of desert miles, and he has been justly styled the Apostle of Arizona. In 1779, two new missions were founded among the Yuma Indians, La Purissima Concepcion, on the site of the later Fort Yuma, California, and San Pedro y San Pablo de Bucanier, some miles farther north. Contrary to the prudent advice of the missionaries, the Commandant de Croix, who resided at Arizpe in Mexico, insisted that there must be not reductions like the other missions, but mixed settlements of Spaniards and Indians in which the fathers must limit themselves to preaching and the administration of the sacraments. It did not take long for troubles to arise between the Spaniards and the Indians. And in July 1781, the Indians rebelled and murdered most of the Spaniards, including the missionaries. Although it was hatred of the Spaniards which caused the rebellion, those Yumas who killed the missionaries were prompted also by hatred of the Catholic faith. At Mission San Pedro y San Pablo, 45-year-old Father John Diaz and his assistant, 37-year-old Father Joseph Moreno, were among the first to fall under the deadly clubs on July 17th. The latter was decapitated with an axe. At Mission La Purissima Concepcion, 43-year-old Father Francis Garces and his assistant, 32-year-old Father John Baraneque had survived the first attack on the same day. But two days later, the rebels returned, and some of them, contrary to their chief's orders, beat the two missionaries to death with clubs and sticks. All four missionaries had distinguished themselves by the holiness of their life long before their martyrdom. Some Spanish captives of the Indians, who were recused later, who were rescued later, testified that for many nights after the massacre and the destruction of the missions, they, as well as the Indians, 
saw a procession of people dressed in white at the place where Mission San Pedro y San Pablo had stood. Preceded by a cross-bearer and two candle-bearers, they marched around many times, holding burning candles in their hands and singing hymns which no one understood. Then they disappeared. The Indians were so terrified that they finally fled to another place eight leagues down the river. Five months later, a Spanish expedition found the unburied bodies of Father Diaz and Moreno on the spot where they had been killed. Their bodies were still incorrupt, but Father Moreno's head was missing. The graves of Father Garces and Baraneque, who had been buried by an Indian woman, were found in a plot of ground which was covered by green grass and beautiful flowers, some of them unknown in that region, while all around the soil was parched and bare. Their bodies, too, were incorrupt. The remains of all four missionaries were taken to Tubutama, Mexico, and in 1794 to the Apostolic College of Queretaro. Christian Martyrdom Martyrdom is a part of Christianity. Christ told his disciples in advance, The hour will come in which whosoever kills you will think that he is doing a service to God. John 16, 2. And the same hatred that condemned Christ to the martyrdom of the cross will continue to be the cause of the death of his disciples. It was not so much the sufferings they endured that made martyrs of the early Christians, but rather the confession of their faith, which they sealed with their blood. It was for this same profession and propagation of their Christian faith that the sons of St. Francis were put to death in many of their mission fields. You may be justly proud of these heroes. Martyrdom reveals Christianity. St. Augustine says of the early Christian martyrs, quote, They are like bottles of precious ointment, which give forth a more delightful odor after they have been broken. End quote. Let us recall the odor of fortitude, patience, love for their enemies, and love for Christ and his church, with they, which they diffused. A religion for whose doctrines so many and such great heroes have testified with their blood must be true. And so the words of Christ can be applied to the martyrs. You shall be witnesses unto me. Acts 1.8 Are you sufficiently firm in your religion to make you ready to bear witness unto Christ? Martyrdom is recompensed with the reward of Christianity, and principally with that glorious reward to which Christ alluded when he said, Greater love than this no man has, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. The martyrs sacrifice their blood and their lives for Christ, their best friend. This love, in turn, cancels all their sins and the punishment due to them and immediately makes them partakers of heavenly glory. In the godless days in which we are living, prepare yourself to make the sacrifice of your life for Christ if necessary. Prayer of the Church. O God, who dost permit us to celebrate the birthday of thy martyrs, grant us the grace to be admitted into their company in eternal bliss. Through Christ our Lord.